So Timothy Goslin from Open Source uh, Circular Economy Days, uh, Dominic Wind from the POC21 and Open State uh, team. Uh, actually, the POC21 um, team is uh, is present with many people here in the in the room. They all have weird orange stuff in the on their heads or on their t-shirts, so you should easily spot them. Uh, we have Severine from Greenhorns, welcome, and Kofi from L'Africaine La d'Architecture and Will Labs. Um, so thank you uh, to all of you to, for being here today. Um, our topic is open source hardware and climate change. Open source hardware is not always uh, um, associated to environmental issues. Uh, when you think uh, about open source hardware, what comes to mind is more like about innovative but geeky stuff. Uh, however, many of the great minds and project leaders that you have heard uh, during the last two hours, uh, well, they built, um, they are already building some solutions that are really, really interesting uh, from the environmental perspective. And that's uh, what we are going to look into now. Uh, and try to answer uh, these questions. Are the makers fixing the climate, or could, could they help? Uh, so first, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself and your project uh, pretty briefly, uh, but so that everyone knows um, what you're working about. Okay, so I'm Timothée. Um, I'm working on the Open Source Circular Economy Day, so I co-founded um, this project. Uh, briefly on my background, Quite classic for a French guy, business school uh, with a degree in sustainable development. And after my studies, I got involved in um, different kind of communities. So we share and make sense, especially. And I was working with Make Sense on a project called uh, Future of Waste, uh, which is a community on waste and innovation. And the idea is to connect all kind of innovators that transform waste into resources and to help them to overcome their challenges. And to do that, we mobilize uh, volunteers and we do those kind of creativity workshops like brainstorming to find solutions together. And that led me to meet uh, Lars Zimmerman, who was supposed to be here, but he couldn't make it, unfortunately. And uh, we discussed about um, open source and circular economy because Lars was already working on it for a few, few years. And that's also a topic I was working on, on it um, with Future of Waste. And uh, we decided to create an event, a five days event on a model of a hackathon. And uh, we wanted to do this event. At first, it was a, we were planning to do it between Berlin and Paris. Then quickly, uh, London joined through uh, the Future of Waste Network. And in February, something like this, we went public with it. We said, OK, guys, so we want to do this five days event. We're going to work on some projects. We're going to do some fast prototyping. We're going to collaborate together. So if you want to join the movement and <clears throat> organize your own event, you can do it. And today, we have 34 cities and 24 countries, I think. So it's quite amazing. It started just with um, five people, and everyone joined. And I think uh, the idea was really to give them the freedom to do what they want, what's important for them, what their local um, issues, and to plug them with all the cities. And we can collaborate during these five days to find solutions together and to gather, and to gather all kind of expertise uh, around the world. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me and the OC days. Hello, my name is Dominic. I'm the co-founder of POC21 and Open State in Berlin. Uh, what we are planning to do is, or to start from another angle, in the, in the end of this year, in uh, November, December, there will be the UN Climate uh, Conference, COP21, uh, in, in Paris. And yeah, we would like to add another layer to what is to be expected from this conference, which is basically citizen groups, however organized, and NGOs, and politicians on the inside negotiating something which, yeah, is like the major, about something which is the major challenge uh, for our generation, in our opinion. Uh, and yeah, we miss, um, yeah, some action in this because this is like a super pressuring topic, obviously, and it's, it's a global thing. So what we, what we will do uh, this August and September in a beautiful castle close to Paris in uh, Chateau de Milmont is uniting, yeah, basically maker projects and open source projects to build one coherent, uh, yeah, a, a, a picture and, and a working prototype for um, a sustainable lifestyle. So what, what are the tools we need if we, if we hear these words and then it's mainly 
very often connected to efficiency-driven thinking of, of big corporations, but can we also start that ourselves? Is, is, is that possible? We think it is. So most of these pioneering projects are already there, and so we don't need to build from scratch. So we, we invited them. We, we got like almost 200 applications, um, and it will be a five-week innovation camp basically there, and we try to build this one coherent picture of tech infrastructure enabling us to satisfy our basic needs in a very sustainable and open source way as an alternative as an alternative proposal of how to take these important next steps towards a uh, hopefully uh, climate wise uh, climate wi uh, wise okay future uh, my name is Severin I'm American and coming from the United States and I'm here representing the Young Farmers Movement in the US, um, which is going really strong, as I know it's also going strong in many of the countries in Europe. Um, I'm also representing FarmHack. Um, FarmHack is an open source platform for sharing farm technologies for organic systems. So many of the young farmers in our movement, we struggle um, to find equipment that's the appropriate size for the kind of farming that we want to do which is food sovereignty farming, local farming, farming in a CSA, farming on the edge of town in small places or in between, um, moving animals frequently. And so often we're using old equipment from the 1930s, from the 1940s, like working with old guys with white hair to fix machinery that's very old. And so FarmHack is a place to share new equipment manufacturing and new tools and ideas um, in a wide range of uh, subjects. And I'm going to maybe tell a few of those tools. Maybe not now. Um, but uh, I can tell now. So some of them are like sensors, like greenhouse sensors. So if you're borrowing a greenhouse from a bigger grower, say, and you have all your onions, and in March it's already 80 degrees in climate change, for instance, then you get a text message in your pocket, wow, your greenhouse is really hot. Hurry back. Open it up. Or if you're using many pieces of farmland here and there and everywhere, and one of them has the bull, you know, the cow with the big horns. You want to know if the electric fence turned off. Again, you can have an Arduino sensor on your fence. In your pocket, you get a text message. Then a lot of mechanical innovations um, are not such big innovations. Like if you're using old tractors and you have a lot of different kinds of implements you want to use for doing a CSA farm, being able to switch quickly between implements means much better quality of agronomy much better health of the soil than, wow, it's really rusty and old. I'm not going to bother to change my equipment. So um, flame weeders, um, vegetable washing equipment, a lot of these solutions are made out of um, like old washing machines, um, out of old uh, pipes. And then the solutions are quite simple often, quite cost effective. And FarmHack is the place where we share uh, share our tools together and improve them through open source forums and, and kind of, not negotiations, but conversations. Um, and we're very happy we just had our million page view on FarmHack and um, we just had our first event in England just this last week or two weeks ago now, um, which you can listen to the feedback in Eng English. Guys are very sweet with their uh, voices. Uh, it was on BBC. It's, uh, it's funny, the English farmers are even more uh, handsome than the... Anyway, uh, here we go. Thank you. And last but not least, Kafi. Hello, my name is Sename. Uh, I'm an architect and anthropologist. And in 2012, I find a um, correspondence between the, our um, traditional society's values and what uh, we call the maker movement. So I launched uh, a concept called Low High Tech, and um, we begin to work on this concept in Africa, in Togo, and we create a, a smart city project called Upside, who give birth to the first fab lab of the country, the Well Lab, and this specific space give birth to the first African 3D printer made with, uh, with uh, e-waste. And in this low high tech uh, spirit, we, we try to do lots of projects with waste, but because the idea is to uh, make a very high technological project, but with what we have in, uh, in our hands and uh, adapted to our economy and our specific culture.
Thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to ask you both, uh, Timote and, and Dominic, uh, what do you think are the strengths uh, or the specific assets of uh, the, the open source hardware projects to tackle environmental issues such as climate change? Who wants to start? Um, so, um, uh, me, I'm really interested in the circular economy aspect, which is uh, closer to my background and kind of discovering the maker on open source movement. And for me, these two aspects, circular economy and open source, uh, has to be together. One cannot work without the others. Because like, I can do like open source projects that are really, really crappy, that produce a lot of waste. So if I don't take into account all the circular economy, circular economy aspects, I'm gonna, um, yeah, the, um, the impact is going to be negative. And also, if I'm only doing the circular economy without the open source aspect, it doesn't work. Because if I want to close the loop, I need open standards, I need transparency, I need modularity, I need to be able to repair my own products. And that's what open source is going to bring to the circular economy aspect. So for me, it's really something, it goes together. It's like if you think cryptography, you think open source. And what we want to achieve with the OC days is to have this um, link. Like if I think circular economy, I think open source. And that's how we can make, we make it work. And like open source is not the solution, it's just a way to collaborate. And bringing those two worlds together, that's how we can really achieve something to have a positive impact, as I said, at least a neutral impact. And we yeah, really need to think how we produce our things. And if I can't know if what there is in my product, I cannot recycle it, I cannot reuse it, I cannot repair it. So that's why the open source aspect is really, really important for, yeah, doing projects that, are, that have a positive impact on climate, or at least try to fix climate. But one without the other doesn't work. I mean, going to Fab Lab, there's some projects, it just doesn't make sense. Um, maybe I, I add to that, this is the technological uh, aspect, kind of, and that is, of course, at the core. Um, I think you could also add the community part, basically. So. Um, Part of the problem with the with with our consumption patterns at the moment, which basically are is the, is the motor for 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 for, for our uh, human induced climate change at the moment, and the way we produce stuff that we consume, um, is isolation and and this individuality which is which is going to, uh, into levels that that people simply don't exchange about their visions about their their wishes for the future and stuff. And if you if you have open products to talk about, this is a this is a or projects first. This is a starting point for commu communication. This is the start can become the starting point for rebuilding community locally or around a project globally. Um, and yeah, I think this reconnection and exchanging about what what kind of life do we actually want to have for us and for our children is a very very important part of a potential solution or at least one puzzle piece of a solution. <laughs> because that, that challenge is, is that, I mean, we really have to understand the complexity of what we're talking about, no one gets that. I mean, we have r like a very basic understanding of climate. I mean, you all know microclimate, which is kind of, uh, which then leads to weather patterns, how, how, how wrong weather reports can be just from one day to the other. Um, and we are talking about a very different scale there. So I think this quick exchange uh, and community organization is also very, very strong argument for open, for open, uh, for, for building open stuff. But talking about community organization and, and communities in general, uh, the, the open source hardware communities are getting bigger. That's really impressive, actually. But they are still pretty small, and, and only a f very, very small fraction of, of the population today uh, knows about open source hardware. So what do you think about this? And how could we spread the word? How could we open it? Um, basically, that's at the core of POC21. <laughs> um, the, our idea is, or our, we are communicators and designers. So we are not really the tech guys. We know the tech guys, and we, we bring them together there. Um, but when you look from the outside, like average people caring a little bit for this problem, but not really knowing what to do, and yeah, it's somehow a, difficult to understand and yeah somebody should do something about that but uh, somehow it doesn't feel like it should be me we miss the communication part and we, we miss also some kind of prof professionalism in that area at the moment i think um, so most of the projects i observe at least for europe are 
still in a pretty geeky area at the moment. They just play around because they can. They are fascinated by the functionality they can implement, which is part of the game, and it's also the stuff that keeps engineers typically going. Um, on the other hand, I would strongly recommend, and that is our try with, with the project, um, to unite those guys with designers to think about product design, to think about communicational design, to use, basically, to use weapons of, of, of mass manipulation that we know that work <laughs> for stuff that is really important and not for bullshitting people into stuff they don't need, basically. Um, the tools are there, but yeah, I think these two or three worlds could at some point create impact in our, like, do you want to add something? Yeah, I'm just going to add something. Um, as you said, I think it's up to people like you or me that are not necessarily techie guys, that we had to understand how open source hardware, how the maker community works. So that takes time. And I think we've got a big role to play as like translators in some way. And also that's what we're trying to achieve with the OCD is to have this very inclusive um, um, event. So anyone can participate. And in our way of facilitating the workshops, it's very, it's our challenge, it's really to, how can I get this, uh, you know, like, nobody person to understand what's going on in this maker movement and how can I make them work together? And that's something we, when I was working with Future of Ways, we kind of achieved, I think. And it's quite impressive to see people coming, they're like, okay, I don't know what's, I don't understand anything, I don't know what can I bring in this. And when they participate to workshop, like, they probably have the best ideas in the group. So, it's really, you have to be very impressive and to, Show them that also show them that things are working, how it's working, and we have to play as yes, this role of translator. And um, like I got a simple example also, like I was um, at my brother's place last week, and his vacuum cleaner was broken, and we tried to repair it. You know, I was just a pain in the ass just to take the screws out, out of it, and that was for me the easiest way to tell them, yeah, you see, open source that's useful. We have an open source product, easy to repair it. I don't need to send it back to the produ producer and pay for it. You know. So we just need to show them practical example, very simple things, and to translate how things work. Um, I want to talk about the, the translation you're talking about between the different worlds. Um, in FarmHack, that's super applicable. Obviously, with climate change, it's a big part of the problem is around carbon in the atmosphere. And, and the grassroots not only um, is a metaphor, but actually the, the grass has roots. And carbon, when it wants to go into the soil, um, it goes through the, the death of the, of the grass roots. So as animals come and eat the tops of the grass from the top, then the bottoms of the grass, the roots, they die. And when they die, they leave behind a necromass. And the necromass is what feeds the wealth underground, this vast, multi-trophic universe of carbon under the soil, which are the creatures who, of course, support all life. So Obviously, the soil is the foundation of civilization. Obviously, agriculture is the primary human practice on this planet. Obviously, if we're working towards resilience and survival on this planet as a species, agriculture is the right place um, to engage. And, but in terms of the technologies we uh, implement and the tools we design and the, the agronomy that we perform on the land um, is, a, is resting on a long lineage of an incredibly open source uh, tradition of farming, farming as a truce, a truce with nature between humanity and ecology. So seed breeding, the evolution of all of our tools, uh, crop rotations, the interaction between the cultivated, the domestic landscape and the wild landscape who provide what we now call ecological services. All of these are lessons which are embedded in mechanical systems or in which mechanical systems are embedded. And one of the powerful um, tactics when we invite tech, you know, tech acculturated people or tech universe, tech ecosystem people into a relationship, into kinship with farm, farm acculturated people, with landscape acculturated people, people who actually work in a truce with an ecosystem, is we have like a really interesting dynamic between our different cultures and we can uh, infuse both directions. You guys can bring your um, dynamic uh, strategic engagement, helping better tools happen. And also, I think there's um, reverse insight can also flow. And that's been really the, the exciting part for me. Do you want to add something on, the, on this topic, or should we move forward? Yeah? OK. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. Uh, no, but uh, Timote used a word um, that I like, uh, inclusive. Uh, and I think inclusion is uh, is really one one key uh, key thing to remember. And I know that well, even if it's not the main topic of our panel, so we, we will move forward. But I know that uh, some people in the room may want to talk to about it later, maybe during lunch. Especially one person who asked me about it uh, earlier today uh, is she here, or could she stand? Yes. Okay. So if you want to talk about it, inclusion in the collaborative economy and social impact, etc. Please go to her. She was uh, interested. Um, next, um, I wanted to ask uh, especially uh, you two guys um, about uh, the environmental aspect um, and the, the motivation, uh, the environmental motivation around your project. Like, what, was it for you something um, that was really uh, linked since the beginning, or was it something that happened just naturally? Was, was it one of the first motivation, or...? Um, I don't think it, is, it, is, was, uh, it was there at the beginning, you know? Because, uh, I think our, in Africa, our societies are not um, enough height to think about ecology, uh, etc. Uh, what we try to do at the beginning is just uh, make project with what we have in our hands you know, and try to do simple and every time you try to do things simple you make ecological projects but it is not because we are a very young community the middle age is 19 in our in our community and we don't have this uh, vision of ecology as you have it here in in the west we just try to do things with uh, little... Uh, so no environmental activists in the wool lab, more doers, makers. We are, we are environmental activists, but uh, par ricochet. Uh, okay, I, I have no idea how to translate <laughs> this into English. <laughs> As a consequence. In fact, we, are, we, are, we, we, we try to do low high tech, so we use a uh, lot of waste and try to make what we, you, you call upcycle. Yeah. But the objective is not to clean, the objective is to make team by ourselves with little, uh, with what we, what, what we have. Okay. And, and Severin, um, what is your relationship um, with traditional environmentalists, like all the stakeholders? The techno boys? Well, um, so there's kind of two factors, I feel like, in the relations. So there's, there's obviously the relations with the agriculture, with the land. So that was, I talked about the organic farming is obviously the right location for this project. Um, then there's farmer to farmer. So farmers obviously are benefiting by selling food, having better tools, sharing with other farmers accelerates the development of the tool. So there's a clear benefit. And then there's farmer to kind of other. So I, if that other is a designer, a programmer, a hacker, an architect, um, somebody who's just curious, like who maybe sits in, in an office indoors, inside, and they look outside every day, and they buy organic food, and they care about the environment kind of in the abstract. And so then they're coming like out of curiosity, like what are you guys doing out there, you know, outside? Um, and or maybe intrigued that these farmers are working for so little money. Maybe they knew somebody in college or in high school, or their roommate or their cousin who's become a farmer, and they're like, why are these people operating outside capitalism? You know, uh, taking voluntarily such a low wage to do something that's obviously ethical and good, but like, wow, it's confusing me. I'm really confused. And those are my favorite um, collaborators. Um, because for them, it's in the beginning really not so clear um, it's not so clear the knowledge of the farmer, like the incredible sophistication and, and, and manipulations that the farmers are making across thousands of different uh, machines and uh, systems on their farm, like Dorn Cox, he's the president of a farm hack board. Um, you know, he makes his own biofuel, so he drills the grain, he combines the grain, he cultivates the grain, he cleans the grain, he presses the uh, oils from the grains and from the seeds. He makes the biofuel in an old uh, Coca-Cola trailer. Like it's so many, it's so many machines. It's really complex. And like the engineers, first sometimes they come and they're like, "Oh, farmers are simple," you know. Um, and then they see this 
inc incredibly complex system and the confidence and like um, kind of renaissance man effect um, of these systems and they're like, wow. Um, and, and the trick I feel like in the, not the, in the culture of Pharmac is inviting those non-farmers in to the kinship, to the, to the fire, to the food, to the soup, to the beer, um, to the birds who are singing and remind ourselves that we can relate also as friends and not just in a transaction like you can help me with my tool that I need to build for my greenhouse, but also we're both served by the wealth that we create together. Um, and sometimes it takes a, like the reason that we have longer events, like we have a whole weekend, which means five meals together and sleeping and, and time for the morning birds, et cetera, is because we have to build a trust and a relationship that the, farmer, uh, that the farmer's wisdom is made apparent um, to maybe the quicker clicker engineer type. And, well, the and they see also the benefit uh, for being in a real relationship with that person, coming on the weekend, having a free wood, you know, f beautiful amounts of food. There's so much wealth um, on a farm, so. I th I'm sure that rings a bell to Dominique, like <laughs> having meals together, spending time creating a relationship, creating trust. I think Pug 21 is all about this too. Uh, and could you maybe tell us more about the projects that will be there and the relationship to um, our, th our topic, fixing the climate? Um, I mean, that, I, I think that needs to be on, uh, on the basis of everything that we do together, which should become meaningful at some point because we are human beings, so we, run, we are run by positive emotions and by positive feelings with each other, so that is what makes us work. Sometimes exactly the opposite, but we always need to come back to that, <laughs> to stay with the group and, and keep developing. Um, and, and we kind of see ourselves in the, in the others are the mirror for ourselves and for our personal development. So that is happening automatically to us as a side effect when we work together on projects. Um, and in the, in, the, in the camp format, we picture that very in, intense. So of course, if you, if you are outside of your normal life, if you are part of a created, intentionally created bubble, basically, and you can focus only on this one central thing for yourself in, the, in, in, in this moment, which is building the trusted community with people and, and keeping developing and making it better and, and, and user-tested and everything, like a really intense hackathon thing, but, but five weeks. <laughs> um, I, I could see that as a pretty, uh, pretty uh, in, in, intense experience in life, basically. Of course, that is, not, that is not reality, so building the bridges, which is then communication and design and the blueprints for what we create there and stuff, all that is part of the game and that's what, what we are there for as, as communicators, again, towards this translation uh, role. But it's, I, I think things spread easier and that's also what, what I hear very much from, from what you, you're saying. When we actually build the working, at least prototype or example, that a different, um, lifestyle, let's call it that way, <laughs> is at hand. It's feasible, it can, it can be done, it can work, it's fun. It doesn't necessarily mean back to the caves or the trees or rolling back all history or, yeah. It, it's, it's built it on what was there and, and now we have this decisive moment in time where, where it's our generation to fix that huge thing. And I think we have like all books written about that and all science is done to that. We need, we basically know what, what would be needed but we are kind of running into our consumption and production patterns all the time saying, yeah, but it doesn't work. The market doesn't need that. It, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work. Yeah, so we, we step outside of that and we just do it anyways because the old system doesn't work anymore. So it, we won't find a solution in that. I have not like the, the blueprint ready to go for the next one. So that is a common exploration and, and, and test run and fail process, but we need to start that at as many, uh, from as many angles and perspectives as possible, and maybe we, we, we on, the, on the go find something that will help us in the end. But yeah, just waiting for politicians and, and b big business to fix that for us is probably part of the old game, game where you are the consumer waiting for better products, <laughs> basically. So, so you're not going to talk uh, about the, what are these projects doing, like yeah, examples? I, I just, or, 
Sure. Maybe it's no, still we can. Secret. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It's not. No, it, it never was actually. We just didn't know before. <laughs> so we had this uh, this application phase running, and as, as mentioned, almost 200 projects were applying for this five week, um, um, uh, yeah, making together basically. And so it, it it it's a broad range, from energy production with uh, uh, bio cells to wind generators to what is the communication infrastructure if we build that on open hardware how, how does that work and how can we make it as easy as needed for like average interested people to build it themselves or at least if it's if, if it was built for them to to understand how it basically works so on the on the average uh, day by day birth, uh, um, basis so we we had five areas, which is energy production, shelter, living, housing, um, then uh, food, obviously, communication and uh, mobility. So these five areas will be covered by projects because we think these are basically yeah, b basic need of, uh, needs of, our, of us humans and our societies and communities. So th there needs to be technical solutions for that in the future with less impact on the climate, basically. Thank you. Um, I would like to open up to you guys. Uh, is there any question to our panelists? No question? Are you too hungry? OK, so I, I continue with my question. Oh, yes, one up. Hi, my name is Tristan. Um, what do you guys, so we've got like, a lot, a huge maker movement. You know, I was at Fab 10 uh, that was just last year, and it's actually, it's amazing. There's so many people from all over the world interested in the stuff who are knowledgeable in technology, knowledgeable in making. Um, and I totally agree that, you know, somebody said something really interesting a while ago about the modern day maker being the pre precursor to uh, like the change that we really need to see in the world. Like, there needs to be some sort of mass realization within the movement that those skills they have can be applied to more than just like making flashy LED toys, <laughs> you know, which I, I have no problem with. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, but we have so many problems and these people seem so well equipped to deal with them. And I, and I love the, the pot concept and I love what you guys are all doing. It's fantastic. What are your thoughts on like what people in this room could all do to try and like, make try and build interest in the maker community because i imagine a lot of people here are part of the movement to build interest in the maker community for building these types of solutions like is there something from communication you've learned uh, is there something from agriculture and, and dealing with farming p uh, people in farms you've learned like what what's a way to like approach that conversation with makers either in a one-to-one -one space or in a in a larger um, in a larger kind of forum, like how would you, how, what have you guys learned from your experiences? I'd be interested to hear. Would like to start? Um, well, curiosity is really the, the, one of the most powerful recipes for collaboration by these guys. They're like, you know, they, they see a problem and they're like smiling when they find the problem. You know, I, I had a boyfriend who was a robotic engineer it's like when he would run up against a wall in the, in the engineering process, that would make him smile. And, you know, that's a really nice approach when we're dealing with a lot of problems, is that ingenuity or, you know, solution. Oh, how can I try it this other way? Or how can I try it six times in, like, only a tiny bit different? Um, so that curiosity that they're maybe applying in maker context to, to wiring problems or uh, electric engineering problems, they have a vocabulary of approaches that are applicable uh, in, an in, a, in an agriculture context. And they um, often find, in the farmers, they find a really interesting new set of skills that they also are interested to learn from a personal resiliency perspective. So how can I use this like vocabulary and skill set and capacity to understand institutions and how to go around and how to create a new logistics and how to manage the flow, like all these skills that I learned in electronic engineering, how can I apply that 
to have personal resilience by also knowing how to work with animals and have personal resilience by having a usefulness to people who produce something much more primary to my needs than a paycheck, which is food. So that's the argument I think it really, most of it boils down to is um, how can I be in greater touch with my usefulness? And uh, Actually, uh, f from my own small experience <laughs> uh, with um, uh, last year's pre-Wisher Fest uh, event at Foire de Paris, which was uh, a big, big audience uh, and nobody knew about anything about collaborative economy or the makers. Uh, actually, the LED things work uh, <laughs> very well. Like, it, you, you were talking about curiosity. Well, you need something to uh, catch the curiosity of people. And then afterwards, you can talk about uh, the many, many aspects of, uh, of the maker movement, of the open source hardware solutions, etc. But uh, something really um, funny or visual uh, will ca can help. And I think what POC21 is trying to build this camp is it will also be very visually interesting. And that could be also one one option to get public uh, bigger audience attach attention. Yeah, as mentioned, that's that's a communicational part of the game to us. Um, but that is now not really focusing mainly on makers. I mean, they are the the, the initial like 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 the group we were we come from. So we we basically need them. But then we need re to reach broader audiences. And this making stuff yourself is not as natural to them as, it's, as it might be to the guys we're currently talking about. Um, and I think another option is, which sounds a little bit uh, esoteric maybe, but you, you go for a walk in, a, in, 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 the, in the forest or lay down in the grass for like half an hour or something, just give you one focused experience in nature, which we rarely do, because we just, yeah, we just use it and we cross it maybe from one point to the other, but we don't really are in touch with it anymore. Um, and I think it's de-alienating ourselves from this life support system, <laughs> from this, and, and, and yeah, understanding that it's not us versus this or something, it's the basis. I mean, the air we breathe is made by trees, easy as that. So we, yeah, we, we basically, it's, it's such a direct <laughs> connection, it's crazy that we forgot about that. And if, if this becomes more felt, um, I, I think certain habits and over time are, are, yeah, you might question things, how you do that. I mean, is, is, is flying the only option, for example? I mean, it won't work by law or something. It, it's, it, can, it can come from the inside when you reconnect to, to what, is, yeah, what is around you, basically. Okay, we have two questions from the audience. Oh, three, four, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it happened. First, yes. Uh, it can be more like a comment. Uh, just recently, I've been starting to study about giving attitude, really, like not protecting my value, not protecting my space, but starting to work with customers the way that I give first more than they expect. And it creates incredible things because it creates that they, they are starting to act the same. And I think that when talking of sharing, when talking on open cooperation, I think that this communicational part is in the essence, very core of it. And I think that even people who have been doing it can open it more and start doing more. And I promise it will reward. It's been incredible during three, just a few months now. And it's been changing the perspective. It probably started from Adam Grant's book, Give, a, Give and Take. But it's been a real trip to go and a way to go forward. Thank you. Another question over there behind. Hello, I'm Karin Bradley from Sweden. Um, I'm a researcher in urban planning, and I'm curious to hear your uh, sort of reflections on um, sort of the, the notion of the sustainable city as in the dense uh, big city uh, versus ideas of a more decentralized settlements. 
Is that, uh, how do you see that? And how does that link to open source hardware and to digital fabrication? Is, I mean, the, the idea of the dense big city is very much reliant on centralized kind of um, infrastructure. Um, do you foresee another future? Um, uh, what I can say uh, by my experience is that for me, the sustainable city is a vernacular one. It's a city built by people themselves, not by the, the politician or, or a planner. So to, at, to attend this sustainable city, you, you need to help people to be in capacity to begin to build the city themselves. And if you see in traditional area like village, people are very efficient um, um, city um, architecture because they 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 they, they, they build it themselves. So we, the maker movement can help people in the city to have this same capacity as uh, as the, um, uh, the 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 villages. I think so. It is in this aspect that maker movements is very important. They can help. Uh, this movement can can help people in the city to have some space. Uh, uh, to, to, to who they can go and try to begin to work together and the spirit to um, uh, put people together and we, we, we can attend the sustainability by this way. I think. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to add something. So I don't exactly have the answer for the sustainable city. Might have a little bit of an answer for the UC days. Uh, because I'm going to work um, for the event in France, will be in a small city, and our lab is going to be the city. So we want to create this circular open source city. And I think it's really important what you said, Kofi, it's really about working with the citizens there, make them decide. And it's also what's good about this open source uh, hardware movement and maker movement, it's really um, empowering for people. Like they can build it themselves, they can uh, understand how things work. And it's really on this part that we need to, to emphasize to show them that they can do it and it's... Uh, it's a great feeling when you do it by yourself, you know, and, um, and same when we do, um, when I was doing workshops, it makes sense, etc. So people are really shy at the beginning. Sometimes it's a bit of manipulation when you facilitate a workshop. You kind of get them where you want them to go. And after when it's them that are going to go further than you thought. And that's where we're going to realize that, yeah, they can make it and they can do it by themselves and like, by themselves with others, of course. But it's really about this, yeah, empowering on part and getting inclusive part again, getting the citizen in. In the, in the talking and in the creation. Thank you. We have two last questions very quickly. Uh, where's the mic? Hello, I'm Melody Cartel from Ecole de Management de Grenoble, and I work on the climate change policy process. I'm discovering the maker movement right now. And as you may know, um, one of the big, big stakes of Paris 2015 is to make the climate change mitigation something more collaborative and something more participative. And they are w trying to make this very big instrument for that, that is called INDC. I would like to know to what extent you're being involved in this process as makers, representatives. How, how is it, is there a connection that is being done and how? Because you're doing this COP21 thing. Is, is it outside the COP21? And, and how much are you solicited by these people? Sorry, I didn't get the last part. Um, um, basically, we come from that. <laughs> um, that is what, 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 the, what the work we did in Berlin before uh, was mainly focused on. And from there, we had the feeling from our work experience for, for years that there are many, many engaged people who are really caring for the topics. And on the other side, there's the will of to, to yeah, start more practical and in a, case, in, in a sense also more radical drives and, 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 and test runs is pretty limited because it's also an industry in itself. So they mainly, or not mainly, I don't want to judge it now, these organizations all by, uh, in, with one sentence, but very often you see them caring for also like emails, more, more data, uh, outreach, uh, more, more uh, yeah, securing their donation base basically not being too you know, pushy for average people. Uh, 
trying to trying to do something good with their 20 euro screen piece donation per month. Um, but I, I, I fear that this is not enough for this challenge, obviously. <laughs> so um, we are involved with the with the COP21 organization uh, in the meaning that we started completely independent. We just made a word play, basically. We changed letters and put ourselves in a, yeah, sneaked us into their communication logic, basically, by using this wording and the time and the, the, um, the, 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 the whole using the uprun and the, the press um, attention, which will be there anyways, to maybe yeah, get some of that for, for, for our different approach. Um, and, and we are in touch with them, but it's not in a way that they yeah, so somehow, uh, whatever, get, take, in, take influence in any way. So we create what we create, and we are happy to share that, because it's not our little bubble which will in itself be of any well, value. It, it, it only helps, might help, if we spread that, and whatever helps us with this, it's fine. Um, yeah, but I don't expect too much from the actual conference, to be honest, because we have like 20, and in that time, CO2 emissions doubled, so I don't see a track record for too much trust on that. And uh, yeah, I presented myself just before. I work for Earthship Biotecture. It's a sustainable architecture company. And we build autonomous houses. And uh, my question is going along with yours, Melody, because I wanted to, to know exactly what's going to come out from this POC 21, is what, what's going to be released to the world. I mean, what's exactly uh, what's going to be produced yeah. by, by this camp? And how it, could that infuse the, the political sphere? Um, we are lucky enough that there will be a keynote on that tomorrow. I don't know exactly when, actually. Tomorrow at 10, over there at the main stage, so there will be more on that, but we will have a whole range of, of, of things from an, from an online, offline catalog with these projects, a, a blueprint design, which is trying to rethink how, how do we actually lower the, 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 the entrance, the, the, the barriers to get in touch with these new technologies. How, make, how do we make it as easy as possible to understand? Um, there will be a documentary, There's, we are talking to TV stations, we are, so it's like the whole set of communicational tools we'll try to play. Um, we have pretty strong partner back up after like three and a half years working now. Um, so uh, yeah, we are pretty confident that this will at least have this lighthouse effect, which is already something. And then we need to work towards the bridges to, to multiply what we did to also open source the actual camp process. So just to, to have that repeat it as often as possible, basically. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we need to end it here uh, to leave you, grab your lunch, and prepare for the other session this afternoon. Thanks, you, thanks a lot uh, to all, uh, all of you.